60 psi. The previous engine used the span as a flywheel, which let's be honest, is pretty shit. So I designed this flywheel in Fusion 360. The flywheel mass can be changed by adding or removing screws. This is useful so that I can see the impact the flywheel mass has on the engine's performance. Now you may be wondering why a flywheel is needed, or why it's important, or you may not give a fuck. So I'm just going to quickly explain what a flywheel is and why we need them on engines. A flywheel is a mechanical device specifically designed to use the conservation of angular momentum so as to efficiently store rotational energy, a form of kinetic energy proportional to the product of its moment of inertia and the square of its rotational speed. So what this equation basically means is that if you double the rotational speed of the engine, you quadruple the energy stored in the flywheel. And if you double the mass, you double the energy stored in the flywheel, provided the flywheel radius stays the same. So in simple terms, the flywheel stores some of the energy released during the power stroke of the piston as rotational energy. You can almost consider it as a kinetic energy battery. This stored energy is then delivered back to the piston during the upstroke. Without the flywheel, there is not enough energy on the upstroke to open the air inlet valve. I've demonstrated this here by trying to run the engine without a flywheel. I've incorporated a thread onto the crankshaft and the flywheel to connect the two together. The direction of the thread was chosen so that when the engine is running, it can only tighten the flywheel, not loosen it. So the flywheel shouldn't come off. Hopefully. So I'm pretty sure this isn't the ideal flywheel design, but it's definitely better than a desk land blade. I might do a video in the future seeing how engine performance changes with different flywheel designs. Let me know in the comments if that's something you'd be interested in. I decided to move away from using a 3D printed ball valve and revert back to using a BB ball. This was to reduce the leakiness of the engine. Leakiness? Is, is that a word? Is this a word? It doesn't look right. Also, the makeshift joint between the bottle connection part and the valve part was sketchy at best because I didn't design the engine with a bigger valve in mind. I've also decreased the length of the push rod. So let's see if it works. Jesus Christ. Okay, here we go, 60 PSI. That keeps going all the way down to about 4 or 5 PSI. That's pretty good. <laughs> so I've making the flywheel lighter by taking some of the bolts out and I want to see if it runs any faster. Let's try it at 20 psi first. Okay, let's try 40 psi. Here we go, 60 PSI. That was super underwhelming. What's going on here? Okay, I'm gonna try 60 PSI one more time. Where's the lube gone? Put some lube in it again. So I think the engine was running Running, why can't I say running? So I think the engine was running a little bit slower because the bearing was being pushed out the back But I'm just gonna push it back in and try and run the engine with two screws now 60 psi <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> so that's what's left of the <laughs> flying wheel. That was that was fun. I printed the crankshaft vertically so that I could get an accurate thread, but this made the part weak. So I'm gonna try printing it horizontally instead and hope the thread turns out okay. It actually came out really well. I just needed to sand it down slightly so that it could fit in the bearing. Attempt number two of 60 psi with two screws. Let's hope this is slightly less snappy. Something's bent. Sixty psi. So I think the rear bearing part is unscrewing itself and pushing the bearing out the back. So to try and stop this from happening, I'm just gonna redesign the lower crankcase part so that it covers the bottom half of the bearing so that it can't be pushed out anymore. It fit perfectly, first time, like a glove. It's not like I forgot to account for the inner ring rotating. Twenty PSI. Why does it keep breaking? Ah. So there's the there's the problem. So apparently, stopping the bearing from moving backwards puts extra force on the bearing connector. But am I going to fix the root cause of the problem? Are you serious? So I'm just going to make the bearing connector a little bit thicker and hope it doesn't snap. I think I've finally got the engine to a point where it's not going to break itself. So I'm going to try and run it again with only two screws in the flywheel and see how fast it can really go. I'm fast as fuck, boy! So now I know the engine doesn't start to start with two screws. I'm going to put all the screws back in and see how it runs. I broke it. So this is why you don't over tighten things. Put this back on. So that's not the only split. There's also a split here, here, and here. So before this thing completely falls apart, let's give it one last test. So I think there's three main takeaways from this video. The first being, if you decrease the mass of the flywheel, the engine speed will increase. The second being, due to the higher RPM when you use a lighter flywheel, the duration of the engine is shorter. And the third being, there's always something you can improve. Oh, fuck. So I think it's fair to say the engine's pretty dead at this point. And that's probably a good time to end the video. Because I need to get my breath back. <laughs>